Hi guys. So uh, in between me messing with my Discord at the moment, they're currently in a lot of interesting things right now. Uh, <laughs> um, anyways, this what I'm actually going to upload was a original concept for the like I was going to go through every episode of Danganronpa three and do a vlog thing with it, but I feel like because of how um, anime is on YouTube when it comes down to, like, reviews and stuff, it usually doesn't boil down well unless you have good network connections or things like that. So currently, I can't really do much outside of GIFs. I mean, I couldn't even do GIFs, honestly. A lot of people said you could do GIFs, but um, <laughs> certain GIFs just don't. Even then, I got flagged for it. And a lot of the sight gags that I had for this original review just did not pan out, did not work at all for me. So unfortunately, well... Uh, a lot of it kind of feels a little bit deadpan to me, but I didn't want it to just go away, and I didn't want to just, like, trash it and scrap it, so I decided I'd let you guys watch it and give me your honest opinions, you know, constructive ki <laughs> constructive criticism is a really, really good thing to have, and I'm going to keep that lep cut in there, because why not? Um, I do realize that back then, due to frustration a little bit, I did probably pronounce the names a bit wrong at sometimes, but other than that, you know. So <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys have your fun with it, other than scrap it. Next time I'll probably do a roundtable discussion with like Trev and Comic, and we'll just talk about like the episodes that we go through, and that'll be fun. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. I don't know. Tell me what you think. For now though, catch you guys later. I'm seconds into the anime, and I'm already noticing an inconsistency. This blood. Why isn't it pink? <laughs> Hello guys! This is really a first for me. I've never really done these vlog review things, but since it's Danganronpa, I really want to give it a shot and try it out as best as I possibly can be, you know, entertaining and see if I can actually do this well enough. So I figured, hey, Danganronpa 3, I'm going through it now because it's pretty much over, or it's going to be over by the time I get to the last episode. And I'm interested in it, so I brought Trev along, unfortunately, we're gonna get to that in a second, but it's it's interesting to me, I want to try it out, I hope you guys don't mind, it's gonna be a little bit, well, rusty, if I could say so myself. I'm trying to fine-tune it a bit, and hopefully as we go along with these vlogs, I'll have it down-packed, but, ah, uh, well... Here we are. So, for those not familiar with Danganronpa, I strongly suggest you go check out my Let's Plays of the first, second, and another episode games. I will put them on the screen here as annotations for you to click and go look at. Otherwise, if you are familiar with it, or if you're not, I'm just gonna say this right here, right now. Huge spoilers for all the games, I'm sure. So, yeah, it might be a good idea to go look at those. Also, originally I was going to have my, like, live reactions mixed in here with Trev. Unfortunately, the audio... He's gonna kill me for this one. The audio did not save correctly for the three episodes that we watched right now, so I'm trying to tinker with it. We're gonna get it working, so hopefully we'll get it down. We'll do it. We'll fix all of this nonsense, and if this goes well enough, we'll keep doing them. It'll be a lot of fun. Trust me, guys, all right? So let's jump on in. Well, actually, before we jump on in, I do have to mention that we are going from future to despair in that order. We're not going to be watching, like, all of one. We're going to go future despair, future despair, because I've been told beforehand that is the way to watch him. So we're doing that. So we're going to be starting with the first episode of Future Arc, I believe. It is called Third Time's the Charm. Fitting. So first things first, we get to see an intro of all the ultimate despairs back in the day. Props to Fat Byakuya. Good lord, man. You're really good at those night vision goggles and running like a ninja. Gotta say, props. Mad props. So, apparently after, you know, the second game, the Future Foundation wasn't too happy about all that nonsense that went on there. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting to finally, like, see the Future Foundation, because it was mentioned in two and then we kind of saw more of it in another episode and here we are now in three and we're finally getting to meet them and that's kind of weird it's bizarre like i don't know they were kind of just 
off in the aether. We didn't really get to know them or see them. And I just hit my table. Ow, that hurt. But still, so bizarre. Anyways, apparently they're not too pleased with Makoto because, hey, you kind of tried to rehabilitate over a dozen murderers and terrorists, you know, probably would have been better just to kill them. That sounds a lot worse now that I said it aloud. But apparently, most of the future foundation is made up, and I'm just going to be in the most liberal terms that I can think of. Complete dicks. No, really. Seriously. So we're introduced to them. Uh, most of them are former Hope's Peak Academy alumni, which honestly just kind of makes sense. All right. So I guess we should just, like, go on with that, right? Okay, so as Makoto arrives and we got we get to see Hinata and Kyoko again, which is great because I really love those two Fantastic to see him again. I have to say uh, Hinata has really developed quite well Still, I don't understand why there's such a fascination there with her, but uh, Kyoko looks great It's good to see them again and then right after that we're pretty much thrown into the fire as we're introduced to most of the Future Foundation, which there's such a long list of them. And all of them, of course, are all Hope's Peak Academy alumni, because why not? I didn't, why didn't I see that coming? No surprises there, I guess. So we're like introduced to Kazu Tengen, who I believe is headmaster, Kiyosuke Munakata, student council president. And then we have Juzo here. He, in case you couldn't tell, is kind of a bit of an edge lord in how he works. Seriously, he's also a boxer. Just point that out. Also, also, we have Daisaku, who is very, very strange. He's a farmer. Ryota, Mitorai, animator. The list goes on and on. There's Koichi Kizakura, talent scout. Seiko Kimura, who's pharmacist. Uh, Chize Yukazume, who is housekeeper, really? Uh, okay. Uh, Rurika, I believe, ultimate confectioner, and that's just an odd thing. I mean, I guess that makes sense. And then we're like, Sanasuke, uh, I, God, I can't remember his last name. I know he's ultimate blacksmith, though. Ah, jeez. And then there's a great Gozu, my favorite so far, ultimate wrestler, of course. <laughs> Come on, ultimate wrestler. If you're gonna do something great, you gotta have the ultimate wrestler on your team. Come on, guys. Seriously? Really? And there was one more that I think they did not introduce, which, uh, girl bound in a wheelchair. I don't know if they actually showed her, because I'm pretty sure they introduced her in the next episode of the future arc, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a bit. Anyways, I gotta say, if I'm going off first impressions, uh, I have to say this is not going too well. Future Foundation just brings them on in and they are just like, Hey Makoto, good to see you, but this trial, yeah, not actually a thing, you're guilty. So, run along now, you're gonna die. <laughs> Pretty much that's what it felt like. So, Makoto gets cuffed, like right, I would say in the first five minutes of the anime. And not only that, he gets the crap beaten out of him by Juzo, who's just honestly, oh, I don't, I don't like that because <laughs> the guy's a dick. Seriously, in, in, since he's a dick, of course, because, you know, dang and romper rules, he's probably going to be around here for a while. Not only that, but oh, just terrible. Bright side, though, we do get to know Yukizome a bit better. And I have to say she's at least fairly nice. Not only does she give medical care to Makoto after the beat down he got, but she also explains a bit more about Kyosuke, who uh, <laughs> was kind of a dick as well, and that his idea of hope is different, but if they came together in their visions of hope, maybe it would be all right. Hooray. She's going to be the first to die, isn't she? Just saying. Just saying. I mean, whenever that happens, whenever you introduce a character who's super nice, you're gonna kill her off real, real quick. I know how this works. I know how it goes. <laughs> okay, maybe I was wrong about the whole thing about her dying first because right after that point, Nada finds a bunch of bodies as the ground and towers start to shake. Apparently, outside, Yasuhiro's there because he's Yasuhiro and he just exists at this point. 
I'm pretty sure the only point he had in the first game was to just tell wild stories and get his predictions somewhat right. And here he is getting attacked by a helicopter. I just knocked on my desk. That's great, but still. <laughs> Good to see Yasuhiro is proving himself to be as fascinating as a character as he was beforehand. I still love the guy, but come on, give him a little bit more of a part. Is he going to just be outside the entire time? I really hope not. Give him a bit of more of a role. Come on, step it up. So after that brief cutaway from Yasuhiro being Yasuhiro, we're back in Future Foundation headquarters where, well... <sighs> Let's just say things aren't going too well because, well, a smoke bomb's thrown into the room and it's full of sleep. Everybody goes sleepsies. And when they wake up, they have such a fashionable watch on their hands now. That's just, it's like right on the wrist. Seems quite ominous. I'm wondering where I'm suddenly reminded of something. Eh, I guess it's just a passing thing. Either way, we're pretty much told, hey, look, new killing game. Oh, by the way, it's being broadcasted. Perfect. Majestic. Beautiful. Meanwhile, wait, someone's missing in this hole. Where's where's Yukazome? Oh, oh, there she is, found her. Oh, well, I mean, called it pretty much. I, <laughs> God damn it! I literally got really upset when I first saw that. God damn it! Seriously, the nice lady. She's dead. Fantastic. <sighs> May we always remember her and her and guards one through three who died tragically that day. Let's hope for the best for next episode. And that pretty much ends episode one. All in all, pretty good. I liked it. First episode started out strong, introduced a new concept, introduced new characters, and hopefully we'll see some interesting uh, fights and you know arguments and things come out of this as we figure out what the hell's going on here at the Future Foundation. Who knows? I do have some gripes, though. The first being that, well, <laughs> they kind of hammered home the part there that Future Foundation's kind of no-nonsense. A lot of them, so far, not very likable. But then again, in Danganronpa, when they introduce characters, usually it's the hard sell. They're kind of... Mm, what's the word? Rash. They're not, <laughs> they're not really thinking about anyone other than themselves. And when they're first introduced, the kind of jerks and well the pattern kind of repeats a little bit here so well future foundation kind of feel a bit iffy there <laughs> another thing we were watching the dub I also watched the sub and it's very strange because in in this dub at least I don't I'd never watched the first animation you know the first anime and in the dub at least they use a uh, super high school level, which for me, you know, I'm used to ultimates, but that's because I played the games and they're translated states, but they're using the Japanese term super high school level. And that's a bit hard to get used to at first, but you know, eh, small gripes, not going to take anything off for that because well, it's just a small thing. But since we're on the mention of that, what the hell is up with Daisaku's voice? Seriously. I looked at both the dub and the sub version of it, and hate to say it, but it was kind of weird to me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that'll be explained a little bit later, but very squeaky voice. Can't really, you know, I can't do the audio here because I'm sure I'll get copyrighted, but very squeaky voice for the tall, strong looking black man that he is. It's just kind of strange. It's weird in some ways, but. Eh, I mean, what what can you do? What, what can you do, right? It's just weird, but oh well. Still, I really find it odd as well since, well, I mean, again, didn't watch the first anime. Monokuma's voice is really different in the dub. Um, matches more with his Japanese voice in a sense. So I like it. It's very good, but I, it's just really strange. And again, I'm not knocking it. I'm not saying it's bad, but geez, it's so weird coming from the game into this and having these slight changes. Um, also, Makoto, <laughs> I mean, no offense to Bryce, but 
good lord, you could have aged him up a little bit. His voice, still very young sounding. Don't get it. Don't understand. But I guess, you know, he's Makoto. Gonna go with it. Uh, sub sounds pretty good. I like his voice after in Japanese as well. Very well done. Really like it in general. Really enjoyed it. I'm a little bit worried about what the next thing is gonna be because Despair... Uh, this one... One thing I've noticed about Future Arc so far, just from my glances, is that they're... It's very desaturated in how its color scheme is. There's a lot of reds and grays and not very much color outside of that. Also, as stated in the intro, the blood is not pink for some reason. I wonder why that is. Uh, <laughs> it's always been pink in the games, I guess, because they can get rid, get rid of uh, the whole trying to get around ratings thing and put in red blood now. Yeah, it's hardcore because it's red. I, I personally like the pink. It's kind of stylized, but hey, I'm just being a stickler now. <laughs> Pretty much, all in all, good episode. Really looking forward to Despair as well, which we're going to be diving into tomorrow in all of its glory. I'm hoping it'll be a bit more happy, considering where I know it's going. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the first episode of the Future Arc. Fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Hoping we'll get something out of it. Hoping we'll finally say the end to whatever the end of Hope Speak Academy is because apparently we don't have an ending yet, even though Junko's dead. Can we just kill Monica already? Please? If she shows up here, I'm gonna bust a cap. Seriously, I'm gonna die. Gonna die. And I hope... <laughs> I already know what's gonna happen in the next two episodes, but we got there, we're gonna do it. Hooray! Hooray. So I'm going to catch you guys a little bit later. Hope you enjoyed my first review. Sorry if it's a little, as I said, rusty. I mean, it, I'm still working on it. I'm going to get this right. I know it is. So catch you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the next episode and try to keep hope on your side, huh? Don't give in despair or something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs>